this is Dr. Jeffrey Moss, and I would like to welcome you to this edition of Moss Minutes. What I'm going to be talking about today is not a continuation of what I talked about last time, hormesis, but actually a continuation of what I talked about the uh, time before. The issue of loss of muscle mass, we call sarcopenia, and loss of protein and its relationship uh, to a diet, dietary intake of protein. And I briefly started addressing some of the biochemical physiologic issues there, such as insulin resistance and uh, uh, inflammation, that type of thing. But then it occurred to me that in the second edition, instead of continuing that discussion, which I will certainly do in future Moss Minutes, maybe I should address uh, really the significance in, in plain, ordinary terms. What's it got to do with average people in average situations, quote-unquote, in the trenches? And it reminded me of a, uh, a saying that uh, George Goodhart, the founder of AK, Applied Kinesiology, uh, used to say in his seminars, and he'd go through some interesting physiologic and biochemical pathway. But then at the end of that, he'd always say this. He would say, well, what's this got to do with Mrs. Fofufnik sciatica? And then he would explain in very simple, straightforward terms what this has to do with everyday clinical situations uh, for practitioners and patients. How does it address quality of life issues? And that's what I want to do in this uh, segment of, uh, of Moss Minutes. Now, this issue of sarcopenia, loss of muscle mass, and its impact really hasn't received much attention in the media until now. There was an article published in the uh, August 30th, uh, 2010, New York Times, entitled, Doctors Seek Way to Treat Muscle Loss. And they talk about this issue of loss of muscle mass, sarcopenia, and its real impact on society, and specifically as people age and on the elderly, and what the impact it has on quality of life. And it really is an issue. Now, one of the things they mention in there is they're not sure what to do about it. Fortunately, there is a lot of research that talks about what we can do about it. So, exactly the impact uh, was really addressed very nicely. There's a lot of articles on this, but I want to point out this one because it has a very interesting title. Sarcopenia and the Elusive Fountain of Youth, published by Hanauer. This was the European, or I'm sorry, Nature Clinical Practice, Gastroenterology, and Hepatology. This is January 2009. And he says the following. Aging is an inevitable process across all species, and frailty is one of the scourges of elderly persons. Sarcopenia, the age-related decrease in muscle mass and strength, is a major risk factor for frailty, loss of independence, and physical disability in the elderly. Therapies that prevent or reverse sarcopenia and other hormone-related changes associated with aging have the potential to reduce the morbidity, which is quality of life, of aging adults and the resultant dependency on families and society. So this is a big issue. And they mention morbidity, but also mortality. As we know, one of the big problems in the elderly are falls. And when the elderly break their hip, that's pretty much a death sentence. And why is it that they're breaking their hip? Well, very often it has to do with muscle quality and muscle function. In what way? Well, think about it a minute. When younger people fall, what happens is when they start falling, they'll break the fall with their hands. Now, usually when that happens, the worst possible thing that'll happen is to break their wrists. No fun, but it's better than breaking your hip. That's inconvenient, breaking your wrists. Breaking your hip is a death sentence. Now, with the elderly, when they fall, very often there's been such a loss of muscle mass, loss of strength in the arms and in the wrist when they fall. They can't break it. And so they don't break their wrists. They break their hip. And again, if I have to make a choice between my wrists and my hip, I'm going to take my wrists every time. That's inconvenient. A hip is a death sentence. So this is a real big issue, not just for quality of life, but also this mortality issue. Now, this was, uh, in terms of diagnosis uh, and defining it, this was really defined, uh, looked at very nicely. There was a consensus group uh, in Europe that published a paper in Age and Aging 2010. Uh, it was Sarcopenia, European Consensus on Definition and Diagnosis. And they went into great detail in terms of what it is, uh, how to diagnose it, how to determine if somebody has it, and a little bit on treatment. And I'll be talking about other papers that get into treatment. Certainly issues of, of proper protein intake, proper digestion, absorption of protein, and amino acids that is high enough to counteract these losses. And I'll be talking more about that. And of course, the issue of weight-bearing exercise is extremely important in addition to other things. And 
But I want to get into just a couple of the diagnostic uh, uh, modalities they talk about. One is something simple like measuring how fast a, a person can walk across a room, and they give guidelines. But something even simpler than that that we can all do, and this is actually measuring what is known as your lean body mass. Now, there's something called bioelectric impedance analysis. Now, there's very sophisticated units that do this that cost thousands of dollars, but there's also simple units. These body fat scales that you can get at, at stores like Walmart and Target cost like $20, $30. And they're not super accurate, but they're good enough. And you can find out what your body fat is. And your body fat is too high, that means your body mass, your muscle mass, is too low. So very easy to find out. And like I said, I'll be talking about ways that we can treat it. And some of the ways that we can treat are just as simple as optimizing your protein intake, optimizing your digestion, and getting some weight-bearing exercise. And I'll talk much more about that. So thanks for joining me in this edition of Moss Minutes. I look forward to talking to you next time.